Welcome, Norse fans, to Norse and Around, part of the Growing Truth Radio Network. As always, I'm your host, James Ernest, along with my co-host, Alex Gray. Alex, what have the Norse been up to this week? We've had a couple of games. The NKU men's team played Wright State, and that was a victory for the men's team. So they move on to 15-9 and nine on the season. Drew McDonald scored eight of NKU's final 13 points to win at, on the road as well. Um, Jordan Garnett had a triple. Uh, yeah, Jordan Garnett triple and perfect 4-4 showing from Mc, uh, McDonald at the free throw line in the final minute. Helped the NKU Norse hang on for the win. Nice. That's good to hear. What about the uh, what game? Who they playing next? Well, it is homecoming week. Just to let you all know out there, they got two evening games on Thursday and Saturday. On Thursday, they will play Green Bay, and that's at 7:30 at BB&T Arena. And then Saturday at BB&T Arena, Saturday night against Milwaukee. Oh wow! So that's not like they got a nice couple uh, games to go to for the fans. Oh, definitely. Two really big games, and hopefully we can get a good uh, turning for the student section. So have they uh, – well, yeah, definitely with me at homecoming. Yeah, the, the crowd should be out in uh, full force, full Norse force. <laughs> definitely. Let's see. So have, uh, have they played either of those two teams before? I believe so, yes. Uh, just uh, last month, on the 10th, January 10th, they lost to Green Bay 80-71, to and on January 12th, they lost to Milwaukee 68-58. to Those were both road games. Okay, so yeah, so they've already played them once, and unfortunately they lost to both teams, so they need to make up for it to at least balance out the uh, the home-and-home, home, that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, I mean, shoot, at 15-9, and nine, they're still doing good, but not, you know, as good as we would like, but... Uh, better than you know, better than was expected at least. So got some uh, got some good things going. It's that conference play. It's a tough conference right now, six and five. So that does make it tough. But fortunately, they do have a pretty good record at home. I mean, seven and two. I mean, I know they lost that game to Oakland and they lost another one. They were quite upset, but uh, yeah, you know, all in all, it's not too bad. So with the uh, homecoming game, I hear like the first five hundred. Uh, Fans are going to get some really cool kind of mug or glass or something. Looks pretty neat. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, so, uh, so hopefully fans will come out and take advantage of that and just oh, there's another big promotion going on. I almost forgot about it. I heard it on the radio today, and it sounded really nice. I believe it was forty dollars or forty-four dollars, and you got four tickets, four drinks, and four hot dogs. To be quite honest with yeah. you, for the price of the drinks and the hot dog, that's pretty close to forty-four bucks right by itself. So yeah, that ain't bad at all. And you can even ask for it at the game, the way they uh, made it sound on the uh, commercial. Well, that's a good deal. Yeah, that is good. So tell us about the women. What have they been up to? They had one game this past week. Uh, they played at Wright State as well. That was part of a doubleheader. They lost sixty-seven to forty-seven. NKU moves to seven and sixteen on the season, and Wright State is eighteen and five, and are ten and one in the Horizon League. So with stats, Kelly Wigman and Casey Utrecht had twelve points. Uh, they also tied for team lead and assists with two apiece. Taryn Tarr had the third double-digit scoring effort of her career with ten points, and Rebecca Little finished just shy of recording her fifth double-double in six. Uh, she pulled down a season-best fourteen rebounds matching her career high of 10 defensive rebounds while chipping in eight points. Oh, wow. Nice. So it sounds like, you know, the, the women are starting to work together really hard as a team, and they're, they're improving. It might not always, you know, show in the wins and losses, but, you know, their, their effort's always there. And it looks like uh, some good news. There are going to be two games on the Thursday and two games on that Saturday, so that that's always nice. Uh, actually, I might... Uh, yeah, I might actually swing by the Valpo game on Saturday before um, heading over to another game I'm covering. But, uh, yeah, let's see the women play, because the men are later in the day on Saturday and the vice versa on the Thursday, where the men are the night game and the women are, well, you know, early evening at 5. So let's see. 
have they played uh, UIC or Valpo earlier in the season? Yes, and those were wins, as a matter of fact. So that was very recent, so I really think we could get two more wins out of this as well. Oh, wow, that would be great. Yeah, I was going to say, if they're able to do that, and that would put them, you know, five and eight in conference and, and nine and 16 overall. I mean, not, you know, world beater record, but, you know, if you go out of the season, you know, on a positive note and maybe even luck out and win a game or something in the tournament, you know, the, you know, the conference tournament, the big tournament, but still, yeah, that, you know, it's great and it's a lot to build on. Obviously, the young lady's got a bunch of players coming in next year with six of them. So uh, as opposed to the men where they don't have a lot of, players leaving at the end of the year. The women do have more uh, flux and change going on in their system. So, uh, yeah, that sounds good. So hopefully the fans will come up for both of those. Um, any other news on uh, any of the other sports? Well, for baseball, and I, I might have mentioned this before, but every day I walk by the Bill Aker Baseball Conflex, they have been doing a little bit of work in the outfield, and that's because they are adding in synthetic turf um, which will replace the outfield grass. Um, the dirt bullpens and the warning track each will be replaced with synth- synthetic turf. Turf the, the Norse logo behind home plate will also be updated. And I kind of figured that's what we were doing. And uh, I knew in the infield a few years back, they made the infield completely dirtless. So it's a cool little renovation. Um, I think it's great that uh, they're upgrading the baseball stadium and hopefully uh, – gives a good playing surface for the players. Exactly, yeah. Anytime they can do something to uh, to better the, uh, the facilities for their, uh, for their student athletes, it's always a good thing. So like you said, they're working on the turf, and the season's not too much uh, farther away. Yeah, what the first game is the 17th. Now, obviously, because uh, you know, our weather and all, they're smart, and they start the season out of town. But, um, yeah, starting February 17th, they're going to be playing baseball. And it's hard to believe that it's it just happened so fast. And their first home game is exactly a month later on March 17th. Excellent. And, uh, yeah, they're playing the team that the, the men will be playing this weekend, uh, Milwaukee. So, mm-hmm. of course, with, you know, conference, of course, they're always going to play a bunch of those. But, like you've said in the past, the schedule they got is, is definitely worth checking out. I mean, they're going to go up to Miami, Ohio, where they've had some good players. Of course, UC has had recent draft picks. They recently had a first-round draft pick. So they're definitely worth checking out. Uh, and they're going to play at UC and at here. So, I mean, they can drive over to Marge Shot Stadium nice and easy or wait and uh, see them at Highland. So, yeah, they got good there. I mean, they're going up to Ohio State. They're playing at Louisville. Like you said in the past, Louisville has had such talent. So, mm-hmm. again, the global slugger field. So, yeah, we got some good stuff going down with Lexington. So, yeah, it's nice to, to see. I was going to say no offense to the basketball, but if we could uh, have this as our basketball schedule, mm-hmm. yeah, we'll take that, you know, one of these teams. Because if they could beat one of them, it would be, I mean, that would put the team on the map right away. Let's see. Have you heard anything about the softball? Cause I know they've done some things to their field as well. I mean, not as recent, obviously, but uh, they should be uh, they should be starting as well the 17th of February, and they're sorry, that's weird. They're going north. <laughs> you would think, oh, <laughs> oh, they're playing in a tournament down. Okay, that makes more sense now. In that yeah, short. yeah, because I was like, why would they go up to the University of Dayton? That that's going to be worse than it is here. But yeah, you know, they're going to all go down to. Athens, Georgia. I mean, gosh, SEC school. Yeah, we'll take that any any day of the week. That's a big then we'll play a couple of South Carolina tournaments, and then in between two tournaments, that one that takes place in Charleston, South Carolina, one that takes place in Edwardsville, Illinois. Their first home game is March fifteenth against Tennessee State. That's a doubleheader. And as being a, a little bit of a Western Kentucky fan, they're mostly like any of the teams in the state. I uh, definitely hope they uh, beat Tennessee State because just never get along with those guys. But that's just a personal bias. And, yeah, so, I mean, it looks like they got a lot of good things going. I believe the tennis has already started. So, Norse uh, are alive and vibrant. Just, uh, you know, fans, as always, 
you know, stay tuned to Norse and Around, part of the NKU Radio or the Grueling Truth Radio Network. And Alex, any final thoughts? Uh, just Norse up. <laughs>